Seats, tighten your seat belts, and let's give an amazing Frankston welcome to Mr. John Arnott. <laughs> Reverend Mr. John Arnott. Hey, it's uh, such an honour to be here tonight. We were literally gathered in the upper room about two weeks ago in Jerusalem, and there were eight of us, and we were drunk as could be as the Holy Spirit fell. And the place was full of other very sedate Christians who had no idea what was going on. And they looked at us with great disdain <laughs> as we carried on under the power of the Holy Spirit. And so he did come in the upper room. And uh, I want to share with you tonight that 20 years ago, in a little church at the end of the Toronto runway, he came in great power. He wasn't expected. Perhaps they weren't even praying that he would come. But they wanted him. And they wanted more. And he came. And the person who was preaching had never been out of America. This was his first time out of his home country, even though he was, uh, he was a pastor and had been a pastor for many years. He had never traveled anywhere. He had one sermon. And he preached it that night. And the Holy Spirit came in such power that, that all 45 people were under the seats and remained there for quite some time. And then he came the next night. And he came the next night. And he came the next week. And he came the next month. And he came the next year. And he came for 20 years and he keeps on coming. But it was a church just like this. And so when Mark said, Where's Mark? Where did he go? Up the back. When Mark said, you know, one night, well, I want to prophetically declare that one night he will come. One day he will come in power. That is his desire. His desire is to pour out his spirit on every one of you so that you can be like him. And you can be an agent of change in your world and see Frankston, Melbourne and Australia change for Jesus. That is what is going to happen. 20 years ago, that little church was like just a few people. There were 45 there on the Thursday night. I think it was a church of maybe 100, 120 people. Within weeks, there were 747s, I think five a week, flying out of the UK, coming to Toronto. But I want to talk about, I think, five remarkable people before I really get to my point tonight. In that first few weeks, Bill and Benny Johnson came to Toronto. Benny had never, ever spoken publicly. He didn't know how to. And Bill was, the, was a pastor, I think about a fourth or fifth generation pastor. Nothing much happened for Benny, and on the very last night she was walking out, and someone touched her. <laughs> and she's never been the same since. She ended up on the floor. The Holy Spirit just so changed her and, and Bill. And so Bethel was born, and we see Bethel today. Randy Clark, who he felt like God had never used him, now has a worldwide ministry, ministering to thousands, amazing healing ministry. 
Georgian and Winnie Banov came and they, their marriage was on the rocks like it was all over. And God so touched them and changed them and transformed them. And they have now a worldwide ministry, particularly to the gypsies in Bulgaria and um, I think it's Romania, where in their ministry to the gypsies, who, are, who were mostly Muslims, they are now Christians. And where the police used to say, don't go into that, that area where the gypsies are, it's too dangerous. They are now the safest areas. The rest of the city is dangerous. Um, Shayan has an amazing ministry. And of course, um, Heidi Roland Baker, who after 10 years in Mozambique had planted, I think, two churches, came back burnt out, got so touched by the Holy Spirit, and now there are 10,000 churches in Mozambique and growing, and amazing work amongst children. So the TACF, which became Catch the Fire, has touched millions, millions upon millions of people, and it was only 20 years ago. It can happen here, Mark. It will happen here. It's my prayer that it will happen here and in other churches that are hungry for his presence or nothing happens without his presence. Everything comes out of his presence. Everything. Everything. Say that after me. Everything comes out of his presence. Nothing happens without his presence. Everything comes out of his presence. Nothing happens without his presence. He so wants to come. And he needs people like you and me to say, yes. That's all he wants. If there's one thing you can remember tonight, he is saying, I'm just looking for people who will say yes. I'll just say yes. I said yes. I've said yes. And I keep saying yes. And he's asking you, will you say yes? Will you say yes? Now, you, you might have to add something to that. You ready? Yes. Whatever it costs. Yes. Whatever it costs. For when he comes and does the stuff that he wants to do, and you will never be the same again, and neither will your church, it will cost you heaps. Mostly, your reputation. Mostly, your reputation. Are you ready to give up your reputation? Bring it on. Father, they said, bring it on. Did they? Are we hearing a yes? yes? Father, bring it on. Bring it on. For the Lord is looking for people who are not worried about their reputation. You know, the scripture says, Jesus made himself of no reputation. Who's not worried about that? Not worried about our reputation. I don't care what people think of me. I often say, I don't care if you don't like me. I'd like you to like me. But if you don't, I will not be upset. Because he loves me. He's my dad, and I'm his son. That's all that matters. So he's looking for people who will say yes. So get ready for an amazing outpouring. Any Friday night, Sunday morning, Thursday evening, Wednesday afternoon... <laughs> Sometime soon. Are you ready? <laughs> Sometime soon. Any day? Any day now. <laughs> Any day now. It's all about his presence. 
Just say, Lord, come. We're hungry. We need you. We need you. We need you, Annie. He wants you, Annie. He thinks you're amazing. Now, Jesus was in Nazareth, which was his hometown. And he went into the synagogue one day, and someone handed him a scroll. And it was from the book of Isaiah. And so he read it. And it goes something like this. The Spirit, he said, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Now, in unpacking the good news to the poor, he was really saying, potentially, he has he's asked me to bring the message of the jubilee, freedom for slaves. After 50 years, slaves were set free. After 50 years, debts were forgiven. So he's saying, I'm, I'm bringing a jubilee message. Slaves are free. Slaves are free. Debts are forgiven. Ah, freedom for the captives. Sight to the blind. And to announce the acceptable year of the Lord. And so today it's exactly the same. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon you. He's given us all that message to be taught, to proclaimed, shared in whatever way you are, in whatever place you go, in whatever place you work, whatever streets you walk in, you actually carry his presence. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you. Say after me, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Do you believe it? He's, on you, he's in you for you and he's on you for others. He's in me for me. He's on me for you. Wow. Wow, that's good joy. Let's just give some of that away. Whoa. Ah, he's on me for me. He's in me for me. He's on me for you. Wow. I was talking to a, a Ukrainian pastor with, with um, Luke just before Christmas. And he was telling us that they had simplified the message of the kingdom. Uh, the message for them had been very complicated. And so they had simplified it. And they found that revival came. People got healed. And they actually gave up teaching people. They just got them saved and healed and filled with the Spirit, then they sent them out. And if they made mistakes, they just corrected them along the way. Got a feeling Jesus might have done it that way, although he did teach his disciples. I think a lot of people just got sent out. Ah, he's sending you out. He's sending you out. Like, the excuses are off. But I, I don't have enough education. Rubbish. I don't know my Bible well enough. He'll tell you. It says in the scripture, he'll write his word on your heart. He'll give you the words to speak as you stand to speak, just as he's doing right now for me. Oh, he will give you the words to speak that will be directly applicable to the person you're speaking to. And you don't even know what they need. Isn't he amazing? Ah. So 
So the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord will be upon you as you go out into wherever you go and be you. And he says, stop trying. Stop trying hard. Stop striving. Take it easy. And listen. Listen to me, he says. I'll give you the words. And his words are really simple. Like this profound piece of theology. Are you ready? This is, you've got your notebooks ready. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. That's a piece of profound truth. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. So Jesus was in Nazareth, as you read in Luke chapter 4. And then as you go around to about Luke chapter 6, 7 and 8, he goes down to Capernaum, which we were at a couple of weeks ago. And Capernaum's up on a hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee. Ah, it's a beautiful place. The Sea of Galilee is an amazing place of peace, beauty and tranquility. And you can just imagine Jesus being there. But we went to Capernaum, which is, it's, the sign says, the town of Jesus. We've got some pictures. If they come up, it'll be good. If they come up, it'll be a miracle. If they don't come up, nothing's lost. It's the town where Jesus spent a lot of time. And so uh, the little group of us, eight of us that were there, went into Capernaum and went into the synagogue where Jesus preached. There you go, town of Jesus. So that's, the, that's a synagogue where Jesus preached and a lot of people were healed. And uh, uh, John, the guy with that cap on is, is John Arnott. And he read the scriptures around that time from Luke 7 and 8, I think it is. And he, and he talked about the people that were healed in Capernaum. And then he asked the question, and this is the most profound thing that hit me in my entire five weeks away. He said, how did Jesus change a city? How did Jesus change a city? And he changed it with signs, wonders, and miracles. And so he then said, uh, asked the question, well, then how do we change a city? Are you ready? With signs, wonders, and miracles. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me and you, for He has anointed us to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the captives and sight for the blind. We were in a prayer house in Jerusalem a couple of weeks ago, and uh, anyone know of Ruth Fazal? She was leading the worship that night. And John was preaching on the Father's love, as he does. And he asked if anyone in the room was in excruciating pain. And if they were, would they come forward? And this man came forward, a very tall guy. He had been in excruciating pain for 36 years. 36 years with excruciating back pain due to accidents. And so John asked him a number of questions and then said, well, would you like to be free of pain? Pretty obvious question, to which the guy said yes. And so he began to pray for him, and for just for a few minutes. And then he said, well, how, how is it now? And he said, oh, it's about 30% better. And John said, well, is that enough? He said, well, it's better, but I'd like it to be a lot better. And so he prayed again. And he asked the guy in a little while, how was it now? And he said, about, about 65% better. And so he started preaching and he kept going up to the guy and praying a little bit more. And by the end of the night, he was totally pain-free. 
after 36 years. Isn't that great? Isn't that amazing? How do we change a city? Signs, wonders and miracles. Healing. At every level of society. And if you read the, the scripture in, in Luke 6, 7 and 8, um, there was the, the guy who came to him and said, my little girl is sick. And Jesus said, I'll come and see her. And he got caught up with the crowds. And by the time he got to the house, they said, look, master, it's too late. She's gone. She's dead. And he said to them, don't worry. She's only sleeping. And they all laughed at him. He sent them all away and went inside. Her. And she got up. And she was totally healed and restored. There was also the lady that, that had the hemorrhage walking down the street. If only I could just touch the hem of his garment. And she did. And he knew straight away. And she was totally healed. There was a man in the audience who was demon possessed. He told the demon to get out. And he was totally delivered. He had all stratas of society. At the political level, at the educational level, at the business level, at the sporting level in our, in our culture, and at the arts level. He wants to do signs, wonders and miracles. And do you know how he does them? This is, this is a very profound moment. Do you know how he does them? Through you and me. That's how he does them. Through you and me. But I haven't got enough faith. You might say. Nobody will listen to me. You might say, well, can I, can I have your hand? Is that all right? If you went up to someone and said, are you okay? And they said, well, no, actually, I've got this problem. And you said, well, be healed in Jesus' name. And they were. Ah. I think that would make a difference. Number one, they would talk. And the most powerful means of advertising today, and the least expensive, is called word of mouth. Word of mouth would take on. And the word would get around. Wouldn't that be amazing? So how do miracles happen? Through you and me. Do we have enough faith? Do we have enough power? It says in the scripture, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives and reigns in you and me. That's a lot of power. We walked into the garden tomb in Jerusalem. and We, we could only be in there a couple of moments, but can you imagine the explosive force? I don't know how you'd even describe it. The explosive force that happened when Jesus was raised from the dead. And now they have the shroud of Turin and, the, and also the headpiece. That it's now been pretty well proven what it is. Like that thing was burned into that cloth in a supernatural way. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and me. Guys, he's in you for you. He's on you for everyone else. Say it after me. He's in me for me. He's on me for everyone else. We've got a, a whole room of miracle workers here tonight. Did you know that? A whole room full of miracle workers. A whole room full. And all it takes is to step out. Do you think the first person you pray for will be healed? I've got no idea. But that's not the point. Do you think the second person will be healed? I've got no idea. Because that's not the point. We're to just keep going for it. And history would tell us that those people who've kept going for it, they see many, many people healed. Many miracles. Are we up for it? Can I encourage you? 
Holy Spirit, will you just come and land on these people and let them know that they know that they know that they have a miracle working power within them. His name is Jesus. And by the power of his spirit, you can change your city. By the power of his spirit, you can change your city. Very exciting, isn't it? By the power of his spirit, you can change your city. One more. By the power of his spirit, you can change your city. Yes, that's better. And you can. You can. You can. Say, I can. I will. I must. That will make a difference. <laughs> oh, I'm putting words in your mouth. I did have a sermon. This is, a, and I understand this is an encounter tonight. Is that right? This is an encounter. So do we want to encounter something tonight? Do we want to encounter someone tonight? Well, let's do it. Let's do it. So let's ask the question, for those that are in significant pain tonight, would you like to come out and line up across the front and we'll start praying for you? Come on. Don't you, Brett? There's more. Uh, th is there anyone here with a serious illness and you need healing? Would you like to come out and line up across the front? Everything comes out of his presence. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that your presence is so precious and so amazing. Everything comes out of his presence. So I've, I've said a couple of categories. So the next one is anyone else who feels like they need healing, let's come out the front.